what we don't want to see is the company outsourcing our work. And there seems to be a trend in the country, once again, to outsource work. Um, Lockheed uh, seems to go with the, uh, their by American means 10% uh, of the, the work stays in this country, and that's totally unacceptable for us. Who in their right mind, this uh, red-blooded American, would want their weaponry that is defending our country built overseas in another country? I mean, to me, that's the question. Uh, I certainly don't, and I don't know anyone uh, that I work with or work for or work around that, that wants that. I kind of have a personal problem with knowing that you've got a plane that is supposed to help defend your country and, and protect your country being done by foreign uh, you don't know if they're if they're going to be friendly to you or not, or it could be on your side five years down the road. Who knows? The way it's so volatile out there, as far as in the in the foreign, a lot of the foreign countries, you don't know what could they do. They might sabotage something you don't even have a clue on to you. You know, get back to like something actually a tragedy or something actually happens. Um, I think we need to keep a lot of this stuff in house. Give an example, like in the uh, in the HVAC, the people that repair the air conditioning. You know, I know in Lockheed that they've got at least five or six different subcontractors that are just regularly there. They're full-time employees just going around and, and fixing the, the units that our members can work on. So we're trying to get that language improved so that, you know, we will have fewer and fewer of those and more of those will be Lockheed employees. The membership uh, are, are getting older and getting to the point where they want to retire or are going to retire. So therefore their expertise and their knowledge is going to retire with them. So they have got to start training. They've got to start apprenticeship programs or all that skill and ability and knowledge is going to be gone and then they can't do what they do. Now we find ourselves uh, behind the eight ball. We have job openings existing all over North America for the really good paying, good benefit jobs the aerospace industry has to offer, but we don't have the people to fill them. So we have to now uh, expedite the training programs and uh, the excitement that this industry can provide.